All right, in this video, we're going to show you how to do three-dimensional dendritic recursion in Revit. Whoa, that sounds way too much like a physics research paper. All right, what we're really going to do is we're going to make a 3D stick figure tree in Revit, and we're going to take that family and nest it inside itself multiple times and see what happens. So let's start off with an adaptive component here, and we're going to make a stick figure branch and tree pattern here. That's where we get dendritic, I guess. Um, so let's start off with a couple reference points. So one here and here. Let's turn those into adaptive components. Alright. And this is going to define our trunk. So let me get this one up a little bit higher. There we go. And let's align it so it's a nice straight trunk. Goes up and down vertically. Let's align that one to here. And here. And let's get this one underneath it. Like so. Alright, and one of the things I want to do with this family is I want the branches of the tree to be proportional to the trunk. So, you know, the branches get smaller, um, will be smaller than the trunk. So, I want to have a reporting parameter that drives the length of the branches. So, let's to do that, I'm going to need a reference line in here. And I'm going to do 3D snapping from there to there. And let's put our reporting parameter there. Uh, like you need to set that reporting parameter to uh, reference plane of the line Go from here to there All right let's make that a nice round number so it starts off nicely there we go and let's turn this into the reporting parameter add a parameter and we'll call this trunk link alright uh, instance reporting and I'm not going to have any control over this, so I'm going to put it under the other section. I like to put parameters that are either derived or calculated uh, under the other category. And I'll need uh, a couple more parameters here. Let's do uh, some more here. Let's add branch length. And that one uh, is going to be derived, so let me put that in the other section. There it is. And it's going to be an instance. It's going to be derived from the trunk length. And let's see, let's add another one to make the ratio. I want a constant ratio. And this one I actually do want to have control over, so let's call this trunk branch ratio. And it's just going to be a number. Number. And I'm going to have control of this, so I'm going to stick it on dimensions. Um, I normally probably would make this a type, but for this nesting, for some reason, the families, when they're nested the way we're going to do this, uh, it likes everything to be instance parameter. It works a little bit better. Um, so let's say trunk branch ratio. There we go, instance. And I'm going to set this to the number I like. Square root of 2 tends to turn out nicely. And let's turn this into... Trunk link divided by ratio. All right, let's see. All right, can't find solution for with type. Don't know why. I get that. Seems to like it there. And if I had it back, it's fine. Don't know why that happens. All right. So now I've got my branches and my trunk will be proportional. So let's draw the trunk. Uh, I mean, draw the branches. Um, I kind of envision this being like like a morning glory that opens up in the morning and closes back up at night. Um, so it'd be kind of like a cone shape coming off this too. So, and then your branches be you know sprouting off in there uh, at a certain angle. I do want to control the angle uh, of this, so let me add that in there as well as a parameter that I want to control. So we're gonna call this. Uh, oops, not high. I need to add bend angle. And I do want to have control of this. Now this would be an angle. There you go. And again, instance parameter. And we're just going to start off with like a 30 degree angle for now. So I want to control the how the branches come off the trunk at a you know zero to 90 degree angle, and also have a um, trunk ratio. Uh, the bend angle. I said zero to 90. Anything less than zero kind of looks odd and not very useful. Anything over 90, it's 
it's not very useful either. So I want to limit my range in here from 0 to 90 degrees. So actually I'm going to add, before I add, let me grab this right here. I can never remember what my key combo is for degrees, so I'm just going to copy it. So let me add a derived bend angle. I'm going to stick it in our other, and it's going to be an instance, and it needs to be an angle. And I'm going to do some if-thens to limit it to, so it stays between 0 and 90. So if my bend, oops, bend angle um, is, so it goes less than 0 degrees, just go ahead and make it 0 degrees. And then if my bend angle goes above, 90 degrees, then let's just go ahead and make that 90 degrees. And anything else, just go ahead and make it the bend angle. And let's see, let's make sure that works. So if I go to 130 degrees, then my bend angle goes to 90. If I go to negative 30 degrees, bend angle goes to zero. All right, so got it limited to the useful range that I want. All right. So like I said, I don't want this to kind of be a cone-shaped kind of a flower. So, all right, let's make that. Uh, how we do that? Let's see, first I'm going to need a reference. I need a place to put that circle. So I need a reference plane to put the circle in there. So I'm actually going to uh, host it on a point and put a circle on, on a point that goes up and down. So let's do the reference line, I mean the reference point. Um, I'm going to set this to plane of the line itself to the line. I'm going to stick it on the, the line. It's, for some reason this doesn't work too well if you uh, have the uh, points stuck onto the adaptive point itself, but it rather it's better if you stick it on the plane at the end of the line. Alright, so we get that one, and there it is. And we're going to give an offset in a couple feet for now. And I definitely want to make sure I see those reference planes. I've got to be able to select them. Alright, there we go. Then I need to draw my circle. It's just going to be a reference circle. I'm not going to be able to see it. And we're going to set reference circle on the plane right there. Let's do this. There we go. Just make it some distance. doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to activate that dimension. All right, so if you think about this, I want the branches to go from this adaptive point number two out to the circle. So I'm going to put like three stick figure branches out here onto this circle. And then um, and then what's going to happen is if you think about it, uh, it'll go up in the y direction and over in the x direction. So I've got a right angle here. And I know what I want for the length of the branch. Like I said, I want it proportional to this trunk. And I know what the, the overall length will be. Um, but I need to figure out what the x and the y will be. The x will determine where the circle is up, you know, up and down, and the y will determine the radius for it. And then I have my, you know, the draw the lines from there to there. So let's do that. Um, I'll need a couple formulas for that, some basic trig, since this is mixed right angle. Nothing too fancy. So let's uh, go back over to my parameters and let's add a couple more in here. So the first one I want is I need to make sure that I get the level of the, the circle in the right place. Um, so I'm going to make this branch in the y direction. Sometimes I like to abbreviate. Uh, uh, sometimes it makes the formulas look clear, especially when you're testing it out. Since it's derived, then I'll put it under the other, and there's a length, and again, it needs to be an instance. Okay, so here's a little bit of trig. Um, what that formula needs to be is we're going to take the branch length and we're going to multiply that by the sine of the derived uh, the branch angle that we want to be from between 0 and 90. So that should work pretty well. And if you need a little refresh on trick, just do a Google search or Wikipedia search and you can figure out some of the stuff, but I'm not going to go over too much. Uh, and then I'm going to need another one that is the goes in the x direction, and that's going to be a length. And again, it's derived, so let me put another in an instance. Okay. And again, it's going to be the same as this one, except 
It's going to be a cosine. Now, there's a couple funky things in here with uh, with that with the way I've made this thing. Because the circle is going to have a radius to it, um, that radius can't go to zero, or you get an error and it says I can't make the circle and it deletes it. And I don't want my thing deleting stuff, so I would like to try the, you know, I would sometimes like make that zero, uh, or at least close to it. Um, this point is going to be an offset distance, so I can have you know negative numbers as well, so it doesn't really matter. But that that one I'm going to have to have a little bit of issue. I, I've got to restrict that to something that's greater than zero. So in my family, I'm going to make sure that the, that radius will be this x. I can't really let that go to um, to zero. So what we're going to do is add, modify this thing here, this formula. And what we need to say is if the drive branch angle equals 90 degrees, all right, let me go back and get my degree symbol. There we go. Let's do that. All right. So if the branch angle equals 90 degrees, there we go, um, then I really want it really small. Let's just do 1 8 inch. That way we have some positive number and it doesn't go. Give me some air. So I need to do that. All right, that way you can try it out. Um, make sure it doesn't go. So if we try this out, see 90. So there, again, an eighth of an inch. So if it goes 90, I'm really going to have a really tiny circle there that uh, everything's hosted to. So let's go back to my 30 for a second. All right, so now I have my x, my y, and what I want to do in those in those directions. Now let's assign those parameters. Get get this thing moving. All right, so the this point needs to move up from end of this line up um, in the x direction. So let's change this offset. Actually, it's the y direction to my by. There you go. And I'm going to assign this to the x. All right, there we go. So now I can create my little cone shape here. Uh, I'm going to create a three reference points on this circle. One there. One somewhere over here, and another one. Ah, there, good. Uh, I would like those evenly spaced. So this one, I'm going to put it on. Just make that a zero. This one, I'm going to make it. All right. So each circle, half circle, is pi. So I got two circles. That's two times pi. So the first one's going to be third of the way around. So we're going to say two. So you do it equals two times pi divided by three. I think that should be about a third of the way over. And then this one let's say equals four times pi divided by three. And there we go. All right. So now I have those equally spaced along that line. They'll stay there. You know, third of the way. Over third and two-third position in the beginning position. Okay, so now I can draw my branches here. I'll do a model, be snapping, I'm going to go from the adaptive point up to each one of these. That error message winds up not making any difference. It can be ignored, so I will. And from here to that one. Alright, there we go. So now I have my basic family here. You can see it's. Uh, oh, I forgot my trunk. So it's my. I got my branches, but I don't need my trunk here. Let's do this. Uh, let's do another model line for the trunk. Um, let's set that and stick it on there. All right, now. So I've got my basic branching pattern here, and we can change some of the values in here and see what happens when I go to, uh, let's say, zero. Yeah, so it flattens out. And the length gets long, um, the x direction gets longer. And if I go to 90, let's try that out. Minus slightly off axis. Okay, sure. Yeah, because it's going to eighth inch. Okay, there we go. And we can try other things in between and get several different kinds of. So there. Now my family's doing what I want. 